You're watching ESPN's Feast Week, presented by Lowe's. Welcome to Disney World. It's the happiest place on earth. And it's Championship Sunday at the Advocare Invitational. One team will be very happy after this one. In a huge old school rivalry game, it's the Xavier Musketeers taking on the Dayton Flyers. It's all part of Feast Week, presented by Lowe's. Now, the road to the championship game saw Xavier defeat Alabama and USC, while Dayton got close wins over Iowa and Monmouth. So, two Ohio rivals decide the title. Hi, everybody. Great to have you with us. I'm Dave O'Brien alongside the Hall of Famer, Dick Vitale. Dickie, great to be back with you for a championship game. It's a great rivalry, but these two schools have not met in three years. I'll tell you one thing, Dave. They played 116 times. Then it all came to an end when Xavier went to the Big East. In fact, I firmly believe Dayton belongs in the Big East as well. But the intensity, the emotion, the passion, what we've been feeling around the hotel, in the lobbies, these two teams, basically, they don't like each other, man. They're going to come out here. This is going to be a March NCAA tournament kind of atmosphere and the emotion is going to be unbelievable don't go away this is special man and it's here at disney world where i act like 12 years old when i get around mickey and minnie <laughs> what do you mean this is a special occasion where you act like a 12 year old well, i'll tell you what they're very very close just 48 miles apart on i-75 and 161st meeting finally back at it dayton leading all time 85 to 75. The one key in the game, keep an eye on the rebounding ability. Xavier's a terrific rebounding team to a margin of plus 15. On the other end, Dayton turns the ball over a lot, and they've got to be cautious of turning the basketball over. Well, Xavier wins the opening tip. Certainly in the crowd, a huge advantage for the Dayton Flyers. It feels like a home game for them. And they really travel big time. They love their Flyers in Dayton. Reynolds goes hard to his right, can't cash in. He cashed in early in the game against Southern Cal, and that's how they started the game, going inside to him. Here's Kyle Davis, a six-foot junior out of Chicago. These are two deep teams, Dick. Yeah, very deep basketball team, both of them. Followed over the top, no play there. Turnover right there already for Dayton, trying to force the play that wasn't available. Intended for Steve McIlvain, a 6'11 freshman. Davis on the drive, little bump there, no whistle, and a nice follow there by Jalen Reynolds. I like Jalen Reynolds, that Jamin Jr. is special. Davis on the other end, you talk about a quick strike. Transition, Archie Miller gets him a run up and down the floor. He loves this team. Says they play very, very hard, they play together, they play tough defense. Had a lot of success the last two years. They've won 58 games the last two years and five games in tournament play in NCAA action. No, nobody wants to face him in the NCAA tournament. You don't, you don't want any part of day. The foul goes on McIlvain in the lane. That's big. Keep an eye because if size becomes a problem, if McIlvain and Pollard get in foul trouble. Reynolds getting early touches, squaring up. Look at the physical play right away here. Pollard went for the theft, didn't get it. The long one on the way off the front of the arm by Blewett. High rebound, picked away from Davis, and a foul at midcourt on Pollard. That's another foul, one of the big guys. This max got to like that. Pollard and McIlvain already have one foul each. Seventh season for Chris Mack, five NCAA tournaments. Seems like every year they go to the Sweet 16, right? He's found a home. I really believe he loves it there. You know, a lot of people in the past have utilized the job to move on. You saw that model, Ohio State. Certainly Sean Miller was there. He left. He went down to Arizona. Reynolds again on the attack for the stuff. He's a big-time player, man. They decided to attack the interior and go right to Reynolds early in the game. That's been their theme right here from the start. Dayton coming in 5-0. Xavier is 6-0. On the back down, Pollard left it short, but he draws the foul. Out of balance, both teams as well. Both teams have a lot of balance. Little Reynolds right here. That's Reynolds exploded to the basket with the jam. He puts that ball to the right hand really well. Good first step. Good first step. Abel with the personal, his first. The football with the line, the junior from Chicago. Abel, a good defensive player, Dave. Came the way of Indiana. We'll see Indiana Wednesday night against Duke down there in ACC Big Ten Challenge. Pollard was a high school teammate of Jabari Parker in Chicago. And he's had a very, very nice tournament. Pretty good high school team. You've got guys like Pollard and Jabari Parker. 
I'll tell you one thing, that's pretty good. Should never lose. Absolutely. Xavier, the ranked team here in the championship. Number 23. Sumner, the freshman, who they think is really going to be a star. He'll lay it in. What a great two-man play right there. Sumner very quick, enters the ball to the post. They play attention to Reynolds. Reynolds with a good vision. Finds the open guy, simple cut to the basket. Nobody jumped to the ball. Dayton's really been tested in their two wins coming into the championship game. Here's Sam Miller. He's a big at 6'9", a freshman. Trying to get position in that lane around Reynolds. Pollard mishandled it and picked up by Sumner. They're early in the game. they been doing a good job defensively. Those two wins, very close games to quality teams. Could be a plus for Dayton. Including 73-70 over a very good Monmouth team who may wind up with the MVP of the tournament. The dish down low and another whistle as Pollard gets hit. Down on the baseline, but back to that give and go moments ago. Yeah, a little two-man game. The ball goes to Reynolds and right down the cut down the lane of the defense. Good cut without the ball. Defense got to jump to the ball. It'll be an absolute shock if the 5-7 Dynamo from Marvin doesn't win the MVP. He broke the tournament record. They won, they beat Southern Cal here in the consolation, Justin Robinson. He was spectacular. He set the all-time scoring record for this tournament. Pollard at the line after the Davis foul. And that'll roll away. And a foul underneath. They're calling it close. Remember they stay theme this year. Blow the whistle. Don't allow physicality. They're going to get a lean violation on that play as Pollard connects. Anthony had a little physical contact inside, but it was a lane violation. Chris Mack working that sideline, Archie Miller his. Both coaches right involved in every possession. Reynolds up to set the screen. The jump shot on the way, and that'll roll off the iron by Abel. Scoochie Smith running the point for the Dayton Flyers. Davis slices in. Great drive. It's going to go the other way. Great drive, but a tremendous defensive play by rotating over. But you can see the driving ability of Davis. But Chris Mack, very happy, and so is the bench. Jubilant with the rotation. There's the rotation. Defense is stationary. No doubt about it. I can even see it with one eye, man. So Kyle Davis, the junior, picks up the personal on the charge. You mentioned Scucci. He was brilliant. If he doesn't play well down the stretch of winning time, we have moment to the championship game. He's a proven Smith. shooting. Indeed, he is out of the Bronx. He's captain for this team. Sumner with a man on his hip. Able to the baseline, slithering in. And it's kicked out of play. It'll go the other way. There's one common denominator, Dave, of both these teams. They share the basketball. Always looking for the high percentage shot. Always making that one extra pass. And that kind of efficiency usually gets you to the winner's circle. Xavier's victories were 64 to 45 over Alabama. They beat USC by 10, but they had a 32 point lead in that game. 54 27 at the half. I think that was as well as that team possibly could play for a half. Brooks banging underneath. In and out. Boy, that was in the cylinder. But the rim wouldn't hold it. Xavier doesn't get too many second and third opportunities. Tipped there by Davis, and now the foul committed by Xavier. Frustration foul there by the freshman Sumner. His first. Sumner, great size on the perimeter. Superb quickness. You know, watch a little frustration right now. There's no doubt about it. Both these teams are going to be playing in March. They're both NCAA basketball teams. Mm. No doubt about it. Oh, look at this. Look at the stare downs. Let's just hope there's no fisticuffs. Let's play basketball. Play basketball. Play with emotion. Play with intensity. Play with passion. But play with good sportsmanship. Well, we were talking with one of the officials. Terrific crew here. Brian Kersey, before the game, said it could get real interesting. We knew exactly what he was talking about. So they're ready for it. Blew it straight on. Nails the three. I'll tell you, blew it. One of the premier Souths in America. He's a guy to go inside, outside, making shots from the perimeter. He's their top scorer out of Indianapolis. Bounce speed in the corner for Davis. Little matchup right now. Luso wide open inside. Great look. There's that unselfishness I spoke about. They got the ball to Sirius Williams, a 6'8 freshman. They move it very effectively. 9-6, the Musketeers, and they have the basketball. 
Blew it again, wants to try another, but not this time. Farr picks off the rebound. He's a rebounding machine, that kid. Davis, great look for a triple. Shot the three well last year, led the Big East in free throw shooting Davis. But I'm telling you, Farr is some kind of a man on the interior rebound. He's coming off 12 points, nine rebounds against USC. It's his own right now, a little 1-3-1 one, one look. Davis to drive it, he's stepping on the line and he turns it over. Yeah, turnover again. That's Dayton's problem. They turned the ball over a little too much. Already five of them. Xavier has doubled up the Flyers early. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by AdvoCare. We build champions. And Gildan. Every thread counts. Championship game of the Advocare Invitational. Xavier playing some good, stout defense early on. Let's take you inside this rivalry between these two schools. The I-75 rivalry, they're so close. They played at least once a year from 46 until 2013, not since then. Most recently, February 16 of 13. Well, they had that trophy they used to give out, the Blackburn McCafferty Trophy. In honor of two former great coaches there. They should be playing every year. Come on now, set aside egos, set aside personnel. The fans want to, same with Indiana, Kentucky. They should be playing every year. Ohio State should be playing Cincinnati every year. Georgetown, Maryland playing now. Those games to me create the excitement and create the buzz in your program. Dayton with only three field goal attempts and five turnovers in the first five minutes. Yeah, the Xavier defense has really been tough. Miles Davis with a little slip, but got it free here to Reynolds. He scoops it. It comes back free to Dayton, but also a whistle on the play. Archie Miller's done amazing things since he's been here. The junior class, Davis Pollard and Scoochie Smith are two games ahead of the pace for Dayton's all-time winning his class. They have a 25-game home winning streak at UD. That's a tough place to win. But I know a guy sitting right here that got a win down there one time against a great Dayton team. You beat Jim a great Pax Dixie, yeah. Oh, yeah. And the little dance in center court. <laughs> Talk to Steve Mulvin about that. He's a Dayton grad, works for the Boston Herald, who, by the way, speaks highly of you. Cook with a jumper and knocks down a three. I wonder if you might reprise that little dance at halftime for us. <laughs> we get a look at that. Here's Davis trying to get right back at it. Blewett fighting for the rebound, and it's knocked out of play. Big three by Dayton gives you a little momentum. Hey, Charles Cook deep in the corner. Uh, he can play. Cook is a guy that goes inside, outside. Chris Mack told me he was concerned about him. Very versatile player. J.P. McCura now into the ball game. He can bring an instant offense. Yeah, he's a high energy guy. No, he is right there. He's a high energy guy. A wild shot. shot there, however. So, think, tipped out of play, Dick, and Dayton will have it. I think both coaches have done a great job of containing their emotions early in the game for their teams. Teams seem to be playing basketball and not really getting too, too intense and emotional to start the game. Dayton would like a few more shots. Look, Dayton now playing that man to man defense. Good help, a lot of communication with one another. Switchy Smith bouncing here for Davis. Here's Miller. Back for Cook. Shot clock down to seven. Cook wants to drive it, but he turned it over. He palmed it. He definitely carried the ball there. You can call that quite often, especially in the league. Yes. The NBA, you can call that often. As Archie played at North Carolina State, brother Sean has done an amazing job in Arizona. Lost a tough game the other day to the Flyers. That'll be a heck of a match on Providence oh, Michigan yeah. State. Can't wait for that oh, one. Done against Valentine. Later tonight. Yep, terrific. On ESPN2. Far on the high post. Off to Sumner. Davis hits it. He's a very strong guard. Yeah, he's very strong physically. He knows how to get gaps and seams. Puts the ball on the floor exceptionally well. And he's automatic on the free throw line. Uh, got a push off right there. Davis, That's on Davis yep. Absolutely. Davis against Davis. A little bit of a shove. A shove, no doubt. By Kyle Davis. Not going to get away with Darryl Davis. Not going to get away with these three guys. These three guys have blown the whistle quite a bit in their careers. Now the Dayton fans don't like the call, and they are going to voice their displeasure. They have come out in great numbers throughout this weekend. It's a sea of red here. 
Hershey Valentine. And Mr. Hess. Carl Hess. Yep. yep. Good emotion offensively away from the ball. On a motion. And a foul here against Xavier. So the whistle's starting to pile up in the first half. Well, again, one of the themes this year is call the illegal screens. Call those screens away. Yeah. Guys are not setting legal screens. That was Makura. He's very active now. Makura plays so hard. The face, you can see the intensity of each player. Watch their face on defense. The focus, how they're focusing, giving help, knowing where they should be. Seeing ball, you man. Scucci gave the shot clock a look there. He's going to drive it down to three and rolls off the iron. Scucci, one of the key players, has been game in the semifinals. And they're going to get Smith for a foul, reaching in. As Austin grabbed the loose ball, really fought for it. So lots of fouls here in the early going. Well, what else is there? They're going to do a lot of that this year. We know it's a little painful. Each side has committed five. And another one here on the trip. We'll get Williams for that, his first. A great matchup tonight in a championship of the DirecTV Wooden Legacy. Denzel Valentine leading Michigan State against Chris Dunn in Providence tonight on ESPN 2 at 10. I'll tell you one thing, they had a pick right now early, two of the five best players in the country. They're going to be featured in that game. I mean, Dunn and Valentine have been brilliant early. We done the other night, last four or five minutes, put on an NBA kind of show offensively. He had been in foul trouble, but he iced that game. Got them into the championship. Lewis jumper, yes. Big time performer. Big time performer. From out of Indianapolis, Park Tudor High School. He's got size, he can shoot the ball, handles it well, had a great freshman year. Postman. And another whistle, Dick, off the ball this time. Not gonna get away with that this year. Far right there, bumping down to the low post. Not gonna get away with that. On far. So moving toward the bonus very quickly here with 12.03 to go in a half. Smith and an arm bar foul. Nice change of direction right there as well. When we come back, Dickie V's inspirational speech from Disney World. You're not going to want to miss this. <laughs> it was fun. I'm so proud of what we've done. Our Disney team has been absolutely super. And the reason we're super is because we've executed offensively and defensively. We've had great motion. Mickey, you've done a great job running our offense. Minnie, you made big shots. Goofy, in that post, take over. Donald, I love you shooting a jump shot. And I'm telling you right now, Pluto, just play great defense. Get that ball to Minnie. Minnie's going to make that big shot. And when it's all said and done, dream it. Feel it, believe it, and we'll come back here and we're gonna be champs. Everybody up, let's go, baby! Oh yeah, we're number one. Disney, we're number one, baby. We're number one. I'm pretty sure, <laughs> had you not been born, Disney would have had to animate you. Well, let me tell you this. Disney, when I come here to Disney and World, I feel like 12 years of age. It's the greatest place in the world, man. You want to put a smile? I was watching a lobby in a hotel today. Little kids with such beautiful smiles, yeah. <laughs> carrying their Mickey Mouse dolls the whole bit. I love this place, man. I love Disney World. 11.56 to go here in the first half. And Xavier on top, 16 to 9. I think both sides are crying for a little more fluid basketball game at this point. Well, very difficult to do because you got three referees here who are going to live by the motto that they want them to blow the whistle. That is the ultimatum they've been given. Get rid of the physicality, get rid of the contact. And the irony there is, of course, that's what they're looking to do make the games more fluid. Exactly. That's the only way you're going to do that is blow the whistle. I know it's going to be tough in the beginning. It's going to be so painful to watch at times. 
These teams get down defensively, man. I love the fact that they always give help. They have secondary defenders in the right position. Lewin backing away, got by Paulo, who slipped a bit. Some contact there and another foul. We have 10 on the shot clock. See, that's the ability of being a versatile player with Blewett. We saw Blewett make the three from out the perimeter, and then he shows you his ability to drive the ball. There are a lot of guys that all they can do is shoot the stationary shot, or all they can do is attack off the bounce. He can do both. So can Valentine, and so can Dunn. Two on McElvey, Blewett at the line, in and out on that one. He is the son of two Marines who are also excellent athletes. I guarantee there was some discipline in that house. Yes. I guarantee. Well, Chris Mack says he's as competitive as anyone I have ever coached. Wow, give up empty on the free throw line. So a five-point lead for the Xavier Musketeers. Taking on the Dayton Flyers. They're doing this rivalry for the first time in three years. They've done a great job containing Scoochie Smith at 19 the other day. He's really contained in his driving ability. He's improved as a shooter as well. Best name in the world for a point guard, isn't it? Followed on the baseline. Oh, a misfire. He got a great lane to the basket. <laughs> 11 minutes before halftime, and Sumner is shoved and fouled on the play. Edmund Sumner is hit. Went to a great high school, Detroit Country Day. Produced people like our Shane Battier, former Duke superstar, Chris Weber, former Michigan great. Mike Sell fouled him. His first. Some of the freshmen who started every game. And can't get that one to drop. They missed three in a row, man. That's the hat trick right there. Jumper from the wing, and all net on that one. Smooth looking shot by Mike So. Good jump shot right there. Needed that. Gives you a big lift. The bench jumps with joy as well. Mike So comes through for them. Both teams go to the bench, Dave, and get a lot of help off the bench. Abel finds the lane with a left hand. That's a pretty shot. Well, uh, Indiana Hoosier, the defensive stopper. He's. One of the premier defensive players in the Atlanta 10, one of the most underrated conferences in basketball. Gets him about nine points a game. So I tightening mean, up here, that one's thrown away. I, I got confused for a moment there. I mean, one of the better defensive players in the Big East. I think of them in the Atlantic 10 when I think of Xavier. Yeah, Big East, baby. Is that drive, good left hand. It's so tough geographically today, figuring out where's teams, who's in what conference. Okay. It's unbelievable. With all the movement the last three, four years. Lewis looking inside. Matura trying to get close. They switch hands very nicely to lay in two. Well, poor job defensively by Dayton. No one rotated over. He did his initial guy, but there was no secondary defender to close off the basket. Pollard squaring up to the lane. Wants that shot. He hits it. Pollard, the key player for the Shores McLevin. He's a quiet, good, strong body. So oh, they're turning carried. it over. Yeah, he definitely he did. So they've turned it over four times. Back to Pollard inside. Yeah, look at Pollard right here. Big wide base. He sees that opening. And then he's going to protect the ball. Seals off the defense. They'll get back a key player second semester by the name of Pierre, who's been out with all kinds of allegations and involvement in a sexual situation. But Right now, supposedly, he was suspended by the school, but he will be back. Followed again, going in strong, draws the contact, going right out far. Jalen Reynolds will pick up the foul, his second. That's big, Reynolds getting two. He's going to keep him on the floor. I think he might want to get him out. Dayton undefeated right now, 5-0. and oh. They survived three early season losses last year. Still went to the NCAA tournament. But they won two games, finally losing to Oklahoma. Xavier advanced to the Sweet 16 again for the fifth time in eight years. Taylor, what a job they've done with five games. Five games now in tournament play the last two years. They've also got the eighth longest win streak at home. UD Arena, 25 games in a row, they've won at home. And the NCAA tournament plays the first four there. 
every year, but this Dayton program, they stand on their own. A terrific program. I would like to play them and then the next year to have to do that. Good luck. Uh, good luck there in the tournament. McCarrick catches, fires, got it on that. It's nice when you get a kid off the bench who brings a lot of energy and who can make shots. You can score. What a hardy play. They're going to have court trap right here. Give him five points. On the baseline, Sumner gobbles it up, and here he comes. Xavier has been leading, and Sumner will add to that lead. There's that super quickness, ability to attack, go coast to coast. Sumner blew it. There's a 1-3-1 one, one, and a little half-court trap out of it. You want to pick up that dribble and try to split the guy up on top. Xavier with their largest lead of the first half. With 8.28 to go, Sumner quick on quick. Yeah, he's real quick. Look at a low hard dribble. There he is with that good attack. Switches to the right hand. There's McCurry with the big three. Nice. Good arc. Good follow through. Good rotation. Dayton to put it in with 16 on the shot clock. Scucci Smith had 19 and 8 rebounds against Monmouth. Pretty quiet here in the first half. Here's the jumper on the way from Cook. Rebounded away by McCurry. Got to make those shots. They did a job reversing the ball against the 1-3-1 one, one trap. Good execution. Just came up empty. Sumner with a jump shot off that elbow. There's the end for Sumner. We watch Blewett shoot the three. We watch Blewett drive. We watch Sumner shoot the drive. And now we watch Sumner shoot the three. So now they're up by 10. Pollard really banging in close. He thought he got fouled as well. Nice first step by Pollard. Good strong drive to the goal. He has eight. He's been the go-to man. Boy, Sumner between the legs to his right. Couldn't finish it. London right back up and another misfire and a foul against Xavier. You know, London really showed a lot of potential the last game we saw. We're going to watch Sumner. He's been really a key here late. You saw him on a drive and I was going to step back and shoot the three. Nothing but nylon, baby. And they love it in Xavier. Performance, hydration, recovery. Advocare, use it. Head coach Chris Mack drawn up a play there, 28 to 20. Xavier has the lead on Dayton. We were talking about the Big East earlier in Villanova. You think everyone's going to be chasing Villanova? Yeah, I really do. I think Jay Wright's team with four tremendous guards, you know, Brunson and Hart. You think about their guard play is brilliant. And I'll tell you this, watch out for Georgetown. I think the Hoyas are way better than what their record has indicated. And then you factor in Xavier in the conference and the Butlers in the world. It's going to be a tough conference. I really believe that. You saw Marquette. Marquette got blown out by Iowa. Who, by the way, the Big Ten, Iowa had a big win that blew out Wichita State today, but Wichita State is so hurt that playing but not three key players, including their All-American. But Iowa lost two tough games here, one to Notre Dame and one to uh, Dayton. And I'll tell you this, they'll be a factor. But really, I, I look at the Big East, everybody to me is going to chase Villanova. Now, Wichita State came in here, lost all three games. As you mentioned, they're banged up. They should be a much better team in about a month. Yeah, but again, that three back, Frank Cap, Cap becomes eligible. He can shoot the ball off the way of Kansas. He sure can. Points in the paint. Xavier with the advantage there. And once again, Mr. Sumner on target. He's really feeling it. Yeah, Sumner really is taking charge. We saw that same kind of play early in the game. It's in Southern Caleb. I blew it. So they got really quality guards. Size, quick. The state in a 1-3-1. One, one. Cook lines it up, got a good look out of the corner, but it wouldn't fall. That's the second one. He had a good look on the right side, a good look on the left side. Came up empty. He'll stay in that 1-3-1. One, one. Makura, not that time from three-point land. He's hit one so far. Davis nudged from behind, but no foul. Pollard swings it. Miller's the open man. Cook got high up there. Far on the other side collects it. McCurry again will not wait around, and Miller commits the foul going for the block. You know, McCurry creates that opportunity with his driving ability. 
Tuesday, the Big Ten ACC Challenge presented by the U.S. Marine Corps continues. A doubleheader on ESPN, 7.30 Virginia and Ohio State. Then old rivals meeting again, Maryland and North Carolina. I mean, that says enough. Enough said. Maryland, North Carolina. If you can't get excited about that, forget about it. Uh, Wednesday, you and I will have Indiana going to Duke at Cameron Indoor for that clash. Yeah, big game, certainly. Hey, think about North Carolina becoming a football power. Mm. Unbelievable what they've done. Now they're going to date with Clemson. Hey, it's been heartbreak hotel in the Vital family. Mm. When all my daughters graduated in Notre Dame, and my uh, sons in laws, when that field goal went good for yep, Stanford. Yep. I'm telling you, yeah, a lot you, of disappointing people. You look very down for about five minutes. It's about as long as you're going to be down for it. Well, you know, they're going to have a great bowl game. They're going to have a terrific year. Lost two games, Clemson, and lost to Stanford, both on the last play. Six and a half to go here in the first half. Smith is open, but no basket. A foul before that. Ted Valentine had a foul well off the ball. They've done an excellent job, Xavier, neutralizing the ability of Scoochie Smith. They've really done a great job containing him. Sam Miller off the ball with the personal. Makira and Sumner have combined for the last 13 points. So a freshman and a sophomore doing it for Xavier. And bench play. Makira coming off the bench. Gives an instant productivity. Abel off to Blewett. He turns, fires, and it's in and out. But coming off his hand, it looked great. It really did. I thought that baby was going down for sure. He's saying to Sumter, anything you can do, I can do too. Davis draws the foul, splitting between the defense with 6.06 to go in the half, 33-21. Xavier trying to open it up here. Did a great job splitting defense. I see that Dayton uniform, I think of Don Donaher. Winning his coach over at Dayton, just an incredible guy, got inducted into the Hall of Fame, class in every way, had great teams down at Dayton. I also think when I see a Dayton of a writer, one of my favorite writers of all time, Hal McCoy, he didn't come any better. He still covers the Reds and baseball. He's in the Hall of Fame yes, in baseball. Great writer. Yeah, great writer. Great writer Remember. there in Cincinnati. You know, our buddy Aaron Boone's the guy who talked him out of retirement. Said, don't retire. You're too good at this. And this is what you were born to do. Yeah, he really, I'm, I'm so happy to see him. I want to catch him, man. I got a few, he's got a few years on me. <laughs> <laughs> he comes down to Bradenton area. Oh, he's like getting together with him. Davis connects to make it 33 to 22. And so now Xavier with the ball and leading by 11. Dane's got to get a spurt somehow to get a little momentum. Because right now this game under control has been by Xavier. Summer, Abel will launch a long one well bad short. Shot. That was a bad shot right there. First of all, he's not a great shooter from the perimeter. Smith, a lot of contact. The stuff won't count. Foul came before that, and we've had a ton of fouls. Both teams have been in the double bonus for a while here. Scoochie's had a tough time getting open looks, man. They really fight him everywhere they can. Summer with a second foul. Xavier has shot the ball well, 13 out of 27. Dayton has only attempted 14 shots. Wow. And a 6 out of 14, but a misfire at the line by Smith. There's a good foul shooter. You know, Xavier 6 0 has got some good wins, too. I mean, blew out Michigan by 16 up in Ann Arbor. They beat Missouri by 12, Miami, Ohio by 9. I mean, they beat Alabama by 19, Southern Cal by 10, and that really doesn't indicate what that game was. It was a blowout. Had a huge lead early. This is a 10 point lead for the Musketeers. Good with a swing here for Abel. And that's a traveling violation. They're going to get Trayvon Blewett for dragging that foot. Yeah, he was really in a hurry to try to start his driving to the lane. No question he lifted the pivot foot. It's only their fifth turnover. Chris Matt does a solid job. Really loves it down to Xavier. He's an assistant at one time to Skip Prosser. Miss Skip so much. Great, great guy. I was watching him practice on Wednesday. And I said to Chris, how do you like your team? He said, well, ask me again on Sunday. That's when I'll <laughs> give you the honest answer. Over the top, a foul there to stop the clock at 5 That's how they got to this championship. Victory over Alabama, not close. That victory in the semis against USC, not nearly as close as that final score would indicate. He had his kids have a lot of fun, too. He took the Gator land there on Wednesday. Archie said, not for us. Archie said, we are here for business. We are going to be serious. 
Miller's man, Archie and Sean. Dad was a great coach on the high school level. Oh, what a tremendous coaching family. Blackhawk PA. Homa, one of the greatest quarterbacks ever to play. Blackhawk PA. Yep. Joe Willie Namath. Namath, that's right. Alabama. Out of Alabama. Under Bear Bryant. And another big win over Auburn yesterday in football. Looks like they'll be part of that final four. Well, they are every year, pretty much. He walked That's again. Yeah, he's piling up too. 456 yeah. to go. They've turned it over six times. They're keeping, keeping Dayton in the game with those turnovers, man. Keeping them a little bit late in the game. So the big Dayton crowd exhorting the Flyers to try and get their offense in gear. It's been anything but here in the first half. They're out of that 1-3-1. And that foul will go against the Dayton Flyers. Tough to watch, man. It's tough to watch with all the whistles as you get no fluidity. But I understand and I can comprehend what they're doing. They are saying loud and clear a message. We are going to honor the requests of the Rules Committee, and we are going to blow that whistle. You guys foul, illegal screens. All could have got a foul right there with the left arm push off. Blow it. Between the legs, pass is tipped, stolen away by Davis. Smith to drive it and lay it in. Tremendous drive right there, one-on-one, -on -one. had him in the open court. From out of New York City, up in the Bronx. They're not going away, man, they're not going away. They got a lot of what Archie has, he's a fierce competitor. Both these coaches are fierce competitors. And Charles Cook with some good lockdown D there to get his hand on it. Xavier's been really struggling a little bit offensively here in the last four or five possessions. Abel can't connect off the front of that eye, but it comes back to him in the corner. O'Mara wants to get underneath for two. Nice move, good post move down in the lane. Did an excellent job right there. And Sean O'Mara with the basket there. Make it 35-26. I met his aunt before the game, took a picture with her. She's so proud of her nephew. Williams wriggling in. Can't connect. There's a good rebound by the man, too. Here's McCurra fouled in the act of oh, shooting gonna, a three. Gonna get three shots on our free throw line. I mean, he comes up firing McCurra. I think we'll see fouls every way a player can be fouled. Here in the I'm first gonna foul you. Right now, I'm gonna take charge. Well, that would Hold be nothing charge. new, believe me. <laughs> the SPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Lowe's, never stop improving. And K Jewelers, every kiss begins with K. Chris, we're really looking forward to getting there once again. Here, our game summary. Sumner has put up 10. The freshman's been very good. Xavier really starting to connect on their three-pointers. That's the biggest reason they have the lead right now as we take a look at today's performance run of the game brought to you by Royal Purple. Yeah, they made some big threes. Sumner, McCure, they're five for 11 shooting threes. And right now, they, that's a difference maker in the game. Making those threes can change the whole complexion. On the other side, you look at Dane's made two. Some are on the bench right now, but they made five out of 11 beyond the three-point line. Makura back to the line, and it rolls away. With this freshman on the bench, Edmund Sumner, they think is going to be a big-time player. And there's another miss, and remember, he's shooting three here. Hello, break here. He's going to go probably one for three. That only counts in baseball. You're one for three, you're in the Hall of Fame. Sure are. And he does make one of the threes. Very good foul shoot, about 88%. So 36 to 26, Xavier. They have led virtually throughout here. They've done a great job defensively in transition as well. You don't see any fast break opportunities out of the Flyers. Follow to his left, no. I like O'Mara off the bench. He's given up some positive minutes. The big one, too, at 6'10. Airborne, Abel banking it, too. Abel, good driver. The m, &M guys, Makura and O'Mara, coming off the bench and really been positive. So it's up to oh, 12 turnover. and another turnover, scooped up by Abel. And he'll bring it back out for Blewett.
Boston. Akira, that's certainly within his range right there. He's always in a square move. Knocked away from him and a reach in foul. We've had a ton of those in the first half. He's always on a scoring attack. Tonight, don't miss Sports Center at night with John Anderson and John Butchagrass. They are terrific together. They'll wrap up all the action from week 12 in the NFL and close out the weekend in sports. Sports Center at night right here on ESPN. Not a wild weekend. Certainly football on the college level. What about Ohio State? I hope they put on Michigan TKO for Mr. Urban Meyer versus first round one against Harbaugh. Hurts doubly because it's Ohio State, Michigan. Ohio State riding high. Mercura at the line again and connects. Peyton's got to get a little momentum here. He got two minutes on the clock. It has swung now back to Xavier. Got a plus 13. You got to try to get this to single numbers, man. Single digits. The deficit. Having a tough time getting good shots. Good five man defense, communicating, helping. Williams grabbing that baseline for a tough move. Nice drive right there. Out on the inside of the baseline. Nobody gave help. Abel wasting no time on the other end. And another whistle. A foul. He'll be at the line to shoot a pair. You know, you play safe. You're going to go to the foul line. You're going to get foul trouble. Why? Because they're always in attack mode. They see seams and gaps. And they got a variety of players that can really attack off the bounce. Chris Mack trying to get out to a 7-0 start on his season. Abel back to the strike. He's an excellent foul shooter. Senior out of Louisville, Kentucky, drops in the first. Louisville really right now playing well. We took the Bobby Valvano about it. He did their game last night over the board plays. Rick Patino feels it was all that scandal reports has kept them out of the top 25, but they're a top 25 basketball team. Table second, ball net. So thus far, a very comfortable looking Musketeer team against their rivals from Dayton. Especially with Reynolds on the bench, got two fouls, went to the bench. Pollard airborne and hit on the arm. And he'll be shooting two here in a moment. He is fouled by the freshman McKinde London, his second. They really got a great deal of hope for London to be in the star. I think London has that kind of ability. He went from 6'1 as a high school freshman to 6'10 by his senior year. That's pretty good growth spurt. Mm. Pretty good growth spurt. Hey, I don't see Bill Murray in the house today. I don't see Bill Murray in the house. Oh, he's here. Oh, he is here today? Bill Murray. Wow. Yep, great actor and comedian. There he is, his son, Lucas. Oh, yeah, there he is right there. The coach see for Xavier. Yep. Yeah, Bill Murray here, his son coaching at Xavier. Little Caddyshack. Pollard, 7 out of 12 at the foul line. They can throw up with a defensive stop right here. As Uncle Mo is certainly on the side of Xavier. I love their driving ability. They got a number of guys that can attack off the bounce. O'Mara on a high post. Back off for Blewett. Right here now. On a motion offensively. Shot clock down to eight. Blewett on the other side. Nothing there. O'Mara's got to get it up there. With that shot clock winding down, but he could not connect. Pollard again. Here's Cook. He drills it. They got to get him going. Cook has got to get going for Dayton to get back in this game. He's one of the most productive players. It's his first basket. Two-pointer. 41-31. He's got to get going. So does Smith. Can't beat a team like Xavier if your stars don't perform. Blew it all net from the baseline. What a sweet looking shot that was. Hey, what? They got a variety of guys that can hurt you, man. Whether it be Sumner, Blue in. Reynolds, you name them, Abel. You're right, and they really did. Don't rely on one guy. And right now in that 1-3-1 one, one zone, the crew up on top. Makes it difficult for you to reverse the ball. Scoochie Smith will shoot the three. Got it! He's improved that area of his game. Made three big ones against Mommy. So that brings the Flyer fans to their feet here. Final seconds of the first half. But it's really Ben Xavier's first half. By and large, blew it off the screen way downtown. That clangs away. Now a battle for the rebound. A reach in there and a tie-up on the play. Possession arrow. 
Ball's going to go to Dayton, but you know what? Wait a minute. They're going to get a foul here. They're going to get Larry Austin Jr. for a foul. You got a foul before? Yeah. yeah. Wow. So it's down the other end to shoot here with three seconds to go. That's big. They got it down to single digits now. They could get a couple of right here. He comes from the help side right there, grabbing the ball. Oh, I don't know about a foul right there. Mm, I don't you. know about a foul right there. Come on now, man. That, that's, you know, I can see you taking away physicality. We got to let the kids play a little bit, too. So Scoochie Smith to the line. The captain nails the first one to make it 43-35. Dayton creeping a little bit closer here, Dick, before the end of the half. How big is that? Yeah, it's very big. They were down 13 about a minute ago. Had a big shot by Cook, and now here's Scoochie on the free throw line. Scoochie. I like that nickname, Scoochie. Junior from New York misses the second end. McCurry with a chance to get one in the air. Got it up in time, but well short. That's the end of the first half. Xavier never trailed. Their biggest lead, as Dick pointed out, was 13 points. Well, I think they're very fortunate to be in this scenario. We're only down eight. Xavier's defense has been really suffocating, making it difficult for them to get quality shots. So the rivalry back. They're playing for the first time in three years, and Xavier has the lead at halftime here, 43-35 over Dayton. Time for the Land Rover halftime report. Here's Chris Hassel and Andy Katz. Dave Dickey, thank you very much. You're watching ESPN's Feast Week, presented by Lowe's. This is the 2015 AdvoCare Invitational. All part of Feast Week presented by Lowe's. Second half ready to crank up here. And Xavier with the lead. They led throughout the first half over the rivals from Dayton. 43 to 35. Dave O'Brien and Dickie V with it. Dickie, a lot of fouls in the first half, 28 of them. That's the most cool so far for a half here in the tournament. But that's their job to clean up the physicality on the floor. I think one of the keys right now certainly is the fact that they made some threes when you look certainly at Xavier and it hasn't happened with Dayton. Dayton's going to find a better way to get better shots. The defense has been really outstanding for Xavier. Both teams have actually shot the basketball pretty well. Dayton has just one offensive rebound, so it could be worse. Xavier up by eight points. Well, we talked about rebound and being the key early in the game. The fact of the matter is, Xavier really has dominated teams all year to the margin of plus 15 on the glass. And you're not going to get many second and third opportunities, so you better make your first shot really count. As you just said so well, Dave, they have one offensive rebound. Well, the Flyers turned it over 11 times in the first half, and guess what? Right out of the gate, second half, Abel. Nice pass and a stop by Reynolds. I tell you, what a great look. So unselfish. A lot of guys would have taken that ball right to the rack. And something right there that Reynolds did. Communicated. Let him know. I'm on the right. I'm on the right. And he dropped the bounce pass, Abel. Excellent play. That's coaching. That's running that practice on a regular basis, two on one. So a big, big start for Xavier, opening up in the second half. Edmund Sumner, the talented freshman for the Musketeers, got shaken up a little bit on that play, too. He looked a little bit dazed. And here's the reason why. Now banging wow. heads there with Scucci Smith. Foul just went against Jalen Reynolds, his third. So out he comes. You know, he really played well without him. And that's a big plus for them because he's such a key player on the interior. Gucci Smith with a bounce here. Pollard down the lane, and he's got a lot to handle. Yeah, he's the good guy, I'm telling you, that's really stepped up here. Pollard has given them a solid performance. They need Cook, and they need Scucci Smith to elevate their game here in the second half to have a chance to win. Pollard with 11. Just about a minute into the second half. I love the way they swing the ball side to side. Sunday Look for one ball. another. Very slick. Look how unselfish right there. That is coaching, man. Create opportunities. Look for the high percentage guy. Davis will choppy drive into the lane. He was denied initially. His momentum slowed and could not make it. So a 10-point lead. Two super efficient possessions. Looking for as another one. Looking for one another. The far underneath. That's a clean block. 
McElveen able to get his hand on Smith with the lane opening up, drives in for two. Nice little drive right there. Set him up beautifully. Change of pace on his dribble. So 11 for Scucci, which we can't say enough. Yeah. I'll tell you this. You just get the feeling they can't knock him out. They can't knock him out. They're going to hang and hang and hang with him. But you get that feeling. Abel back out for Miles Davis. Way downtown, Sumner. That three off the mark. Davis follows it, though, for two. You can't allow that to happen. They get a bad shot out of a perimeter player, and then they get the offensive rebound. Turned over again. It's been a real problem for the Flyers. Far with the good defensive play. Davis really an aggressive player. And he is named after the Jazz great up and in for two more. And the man they're really connecting with is far, and that leads to a timeout. Well, what they're doing, Dave, is the penetration, getting help to him, and then finding the open man. Unselfish, unselfish, unselfish. That's why they're winning. Look at this right here. Now the defense rotates over. He dumps it inside, and they get a layup, and they go up on the scoreboard. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Lowe's, never stop improving. And Infinity, luxury cars that deliver inspired performance. Well, James Farr coming off the bench for Xavier. He did not start in this half, but he has four points, a rebound. He's blocked a shot. As you look at the reset here of offensive rebounds, and man, Nothing going on on the glass on the offensive end for Dayton. Absolutely. You know, strong rebounded team when you look at Xavier. And I love their depth. They're so deep. They got right now, you talk about guys that can score six players averaging at least nine points a game. They go to their bench. Reynolds gets in foul trouble and brings it four. I mean, they don't miss a whole lot when they have to go to their bench. Very deep. And they defend really well. Smith lobbing it inside. A double team off the side of the backboard by McIlvain. Stay on this end with eight seconds on the shot clock, 17.20 to go. Got some good news. Wichita State men's basketball player Anton Grady was released from the Orlando Regional Medical Center today. He is headed back home to Wichita with the team. He has suffered that spinal cord concussion on the floor. It was the scariest moment of this tournament. He was down for several minutes, taken off on a stretcher. Apparently he's going to be all right. He wanted everyone to know he's been reading the tweets. He said, I sent out a big thank you to Shocker Nation. Well, we're really happy for that story because really, it was scary. Really frightening. A battle underneath Farr. Tipped by Blue. Farr gets it back. He draws the foul. Look at the way they work out of glass. I mean, they pride themselves, man, like Michigan State does. They really pride themselves in attacking the glass. This is a really quality team we're looking at Xavier. We talked about all of the fouls, and boy, there have been a ton of them in this one. Crashing the glass again, and they'll get McElveen there. And these officials are going to be selected to the NCAA tournament based on how they perform in the regular season, just like the teams themselves. And this is a veteran crew. We talked about the 28 fouls in the first half, and better foul shooting than that, incidentally. Oh, we wouldn't show that. We'd give him break. He's done such a great job rebounding. But look at it right here. We got a veteran crew on this game. I mean, are you kidding me? These guys are blowing the whistle a lot during their careers. Carl Hess, Teddy Valentine, and Brian Kersey. But it was a lot of fouls in the first 20 minutes. Every shot is challenged, man. They really come after you, Savior. They're going to have to make some threes when you look at Dayton to get back in this game and get some momentum. Smith back for Miller, but well short. 16 and a half to go here. Xavier has led throughout the game. They got the swag right now. They got the upper hand. There's no doubt about it. They're executing. Far on Miller. Pretty good battle here. He can't connect. Well, Miller did a great job forcing him away from the basket. Took his angle away. Dayton looking to get on an offensive run. They really haven't had one in the entire game to this point. Miller on a low block. The two number twos go toe-to-toe, -to -toe and he missed everything there, and it's out of play. Can't get a spur to offensively at all, and that's because of the suffocating defense. Chris Max got to really be proud. When you've got a team that defends and defends really well against a quality team like Dayton, you've got a chance to win. 
Xavier right now 6-0, Dayton 5-0. Dayton had that terrific back and forth 82-77 victory over Iowa to begin the tournament. And that was a quality win. Then beat a very good Monmouth team. Yeah, Monmouth beat UCLA, beat Notre Dame, beat Southern Cal today. Wow, with a tough move in the lane. He comes off the bench, man. He's positive. He's a force for that. They're going to love this team down here. Musketeer country, boy. They're going to love it. Straight on for three, but too strong. And a rebound comes back to Xavier. And Dayton's in a danger zone right now, Dick. Real danger zone. Another big game they got is December 12th in the Cronin's Club. A very good Cincinnati team. Mark and company. That'll be a very electric environment. Now this is the Look at this. Look at this. It's Look, at this. Again. Look at this stuff. Always finding the open man. You cut, you move without the ball, positive things happen. They are cheering on that sideline. They're going to be very pleased. A brilliant performance here early in the second half. Farr did not start the second half. He already has eight points. And three rebounds, plus a block shot. And their stars on the sideline of foul trouble, Reynolds. To Davis, is Pollard. They've turned to him throughout the game, and they need a big bucket, but he lost it. They've been turning it over uh -oh. way too much. Here's uh -oh. Blue. Uh -oh. And the foul as well. He'll be at the line. Uh oh, you are right, Mr. O'Brien. It is danger time, and it's celebration time for Xavier's faithful. They are slapping high fives, going wild behind the bench. Bill Murray loves it. His son loves it. Little Bill Murray. Here we are. Transition. Great use of the left hand. It's a rivalry game. They like to get under each other's skin. Dayton hasn't won at Xavier since the Carter administration. Oh, That's little. why President Carter has made an appearance here. I was wondering why Jimmy Carter's picture was there. Thanks for helping me out. Wow. Look at the second half run, Dick. 14 to 4. They have really come out of the gate firing. See if I got my history right. Tell me. I know you're a history buff. I love history. He really, 76 to 80, got beat by President Reagan. Am I right? That's correct. So that's a long time ago. Long time ago. Long time ago. This wow. This is the 161st meeting between these two, but they haven't met in three years. I was young then. <laughs> wow, I had a few more hairs. He did have a few more hairs. Still having more fun though now. I'm having more fun now. You're 76. Your energy is unbelievable. I'm 21. <laughs> <laughs> Cook with a bounce here for Pollard. Davis launching. And up and over the top of that backboard. So it goes back over to Xavier. And nothing going right for the Flyers right now. You know, the Flyers got a quality team. And they're going to have a good, solid year. But they really are beating a team who's really executing, playing really so well together defensively and offensively. I mean, high percentage shots, sharing the basketball. Every one of their wins in this tournament here in Lake Buena Vista, Florida, has been pretty easy. Here's Davis from three. Oh, yeah. So many weapons, Dave. How many names do you call off? I mean, they got guys that can shoot the ball from the perimeter. They got interior players. This is a legitimate top 20 basketball team. No, no question. Right now, number 23. They may even be a lot higher than that. I think they're better than that. I really do. Cook with it. Back off for Scucci Smith, who's been really quiet. Pollard went for the save, but right back to the Musketeers. I think this could be a special Xavier team, and they've had some really great teams. They've been going to the Sweet 16 virtually every year. Lewis Paul oh, Davis wanted to play. Able what a great play. He what a great it. play. What a super play. And look at the bench. They're jubilant. They're jumping with joy. Oh, they're dancing. They love it, baby. They love it. Now the Xavier fans are up and in full voice. Cheese it grooves are the best of both worlds. Like a Well, they're taking a look at the last shot, whether it was a three or a two, but at the moment, it's a 16 to nothing run dip. Yeah, at the moment, it's inconsequential. Because really, take one away, not going to really hurt them. They are playing just brilliant basketball. A great second half. Take a look right here. That looked like a three to me. Looks like a trifecta. You know what? This almost matches the performance here early in the second half, what they did in the first half against Southern Cal when they were up 27 at halftime. They really have to be aware of their ability to do that because they're in a different league as far as getting those runs together. That was a three, by the way, counted as a triple and another foul. Saw a ton of them in the first 20 minutes. I'll tell you one thing, Archie's got to be really frustrated. Performance certainly has not been at a high level here for Dayton. Something they've done in his tenure while he's been here. 
That's not happening right now. Foul number four on McIlvain. So he will sit. To put it mildly, a pro Dayton crowd, but it's another reminder that crowds don't win games. Players do. Absolutely. And the crowd has been great throughout the weekend in support of the Flyers, really helped them get to the championship, but Xavier has made them sit a lot more than they would like. Here's Blewett's shot. On target again. What triple. I mean, what are they not doing? They're doing everything except sell popcorn, going out with Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse. I mean, they're having just an absolute great, great year, second half. 66-39. Smith has it knocked away, and they'll keep it on this end, says Ted Valentine. I'm impressed with the way they help out on defense. They play as a team. They rotate, and the way they share the basketball, and also the versatility, the number of guys that can hurt you from the perimeter or off the bounce and the drive to the basket. Another whistle. Last five and a half minutes. It's a 19 to nothing run for Xavier. So it's going to be a long final 12 and a half minutes. The way things are going right now for Dayton. Davis and banging there between McIlvain and Pollard. Wow. So Pollard with a rough second half. He really came out smoking in the first half. And it looked like he was going to have a huge game, but they've shut him down here. They got 10 set, solid big time players when you look at Xavier. They can rotate, they definitely. Look at the way they always look for the open guy. Always tipped up and in by O'Mara nonetheless. Looking for the open guy all the time. Great vision, excellent passes, shooters, rebounders, defenders. Another foul with 11.59 remaining. And we will take the break as well here in the AdvoCare Invitational Championship game. It is all Musketeers just outside Disney. Chris Mack and Xavier sailing right now, a huge lead over their rivals, 68-39 over Dayton. But one of the great stories to come out of this tournament are the Monmouth Hawks. A little school from New Jersey, and their bench, their which bench. is trending <laughs> all over the place. Oh, a little really? resuscitation there, and then a the complete pass. I mean, great, great stuff. The choreography was off oh, the charts. And, and how about Justin Robinson, their little point guard? Oh, he's terrific, man. He had 22, 28, 27. He broke the tournament record for three games. He missed about 5 eight. I was with him in a hotel lobby, two pictures. He's about 5'6", five, 5'7", five, but he's a giant with a rock in his hands. Just like Tyler Eulis is. Look at those right there. I guarantee you, none of those kids at Monmouth were recruited by any of the major schools that you're looking at. i tell you this, they can play. They beat Notre Dame, they beat UCLA, and they beat certainly Southern Cal. Unbelievable. He should be the tournament MVP. Oh, we think. think he would be 77 points. That broke Michael Beasley's tournament record. Well, you got a scoop if he's not. You got a big scoop. It only reminds me of Mammoth years ago, way before you. Wait, had a little guard in Ron Cornegay. Ron Cornegay coached the Mammoth, and he was special. And this guy is special. Followed with the stuff off the inbound. Ron Cornegay. Oh, he was great, man. He was great. You're the only one in the building that would have come up with that one. <laughs> he was a terrific player. Austin Jr. drives the foul on the hip. We go back to that alley-oop on the inbounds. Hey, finally something executed. We've got something really going for him. Good set up play on a lot of bounds. Watch you get these guys to regroup. Just look in the mirror. They'll think about this. Come back and play hard. Well, they really wanted to treat this tournament here in Lake Buena Vista like an NCAA tournament, including right down to how they were preparing and how the trainer, what, what gear he was bringing for this, you know, four or five days. But it has not worked out today. Another whistle at 11.39 remaining, 68 to 41. Mike Mulcahy, the athletic trainer, and he prepared with, he bought a, a trash can down in Puerto Rico last year. He filled it with ice so players could soak after games. This year, at the Advocare, he brought three recovery boots. Those compress the muscles. They help flush lactic acid from the muscles to decrease soreness. They won on Thursday in the first round, and 
Kendall Pollard and Scoochie Smith were wearing the boots while lying in a hotel bed at the Gaylord Hotel, not far from the HB Fieldhouse here. And Mulcahy said the team had one pair of boots last year, so they went to three. They bought two more. And most of the players taking turns wearing those in preparation for that game on Friday against Monmouth, which they won, and that was a real slugfest. Came right down to the wire, won that game by three. And I think about Xavier, Chris Mann, his wife is in the Hall of Fame at Dayton as Dayton? a player. Yes. Yeah. She's yeah. in the Hall of Fame. Well, how she feels seeing her album out again, pummeled like this? I think she's a little happier because she's got to sleep with that guy. <laughs> I think she'll be a little happier. Makira with the foul is second. Not getting any better here for the Dayton Flyers. They are picked to win the A-10 by the coaches and the media over Rhode Island and Davidson, BCU, and GW. I really, I don't know about you, man. I didn't expect this at all. Not at all. Not at all. I thought we are going to have a nail-biter. I mentioned Rhode Island, Danny Hurley, was the key player, and Kid Matthews. Foul on Blewett, his second. And they got Danny years ago. And Donnie May and Finkel way back in the days went to the Final Four. It's had such history. Jim Paxson, Johnny Davis, or Giddings. They've had some great players, especially out of Detroit. There's that 1-3-1 that was so effective in the first half. The career at the point of it. But it make it very difficult. See that right there? Made it very difficult to reverse the ball. And the travel. You got to step and create a passing lane for your teammate. You can't allow and having two guys and have the guy right between them, so you can't reverse the ball. You got to create a passing lane. That's 18 turnovers, though, for the Flyers, and only eight for Xavier. We've seen the Flyers a lot crisper in this tournament. Well, you know, the Flyers really had a problem early this year. Get about it, preparing for the game. Right of Dave Jablonski, right of Hollers. Right the Reynolds, what, what too about, strong. What about their turnover situation? It has really caught up to them in this one. As we approach ten and a half minutes to go. Davis lets fly. And a foul over the back. They'll get Whirly for that one. And a great matchup tonight in the championship of the DirecTV Wooden Legacy. Denzel Valentine leading Michigan State against Chris Dunn and Providence tonight on ESPN2 at 10 p.m. Tell you one thing, that's a campus game. I'll be home by that time. Jumping in the car right here, get right down to beautiful Lakewood Ranch, Florida, the Sarasota area. Turn on the TV, watch Izzo go at it, watch Mr. Valentine and Mr. Dunn. I mean, that's one heck of a matchup. My guy Andy Katz in the studio will tell you those two guys can flat out play. Sumner at the line, drops in the first one. A closer look at Denzel Valentine. Two triple doubles already this season. Wow, two triple doubles. He's making like a mini version of the Magic Man. My favorite player of all time, Irvin Magic Johnson. Your favorite college player or your, your favorite all player? Around, all around, just play at any level. High school, college, pros, always played with a smile, always played with such unbelievable feel, can play any position on the floor. And Magic Johnson and Larry Bird and, and that national championship, that just galvanized an entire country. And I think changed the face of college basketball forever, would you agree? 1979, absolutely. 10-21 to go, Far with the foul. On the Xavier side, James Farr, who had a big, Opening five or six minutes in the second half. And he scored those eight points over the top here for Scoochie Smith. Well, the Xavier Musketeers have really taken the Flyer fans out of this one, haven't they? Well, Scoochie really hasn't had his A game, and neither is Cook. Miller got it, a three pointer. And Miller off the bench. Good size, can shoot the basketball as well. I mean, Dayton has had. 2,000 fans at every one of their games, a minimum of 2,000 Well, they, they love basketball. I'm telling you, they and people, they come out, they pack that place every year. Well, they just hit their first field goal in eight and a half minutes. Wow. Sumner kicks it back out for McCure at a three. Right back up Reynolds, deflected away by Miller, and a foul. This will go against Xavier. Remember, we also saw in that Southern Cal game, where they got a little lackadaisical when they got the big lead and Southern Cal got it down with like 10 or 12 and really made a, a nice finish to get some respectability. The game was never ever in doubt. 
but there's a tendency, you know, you look at the scoreboard, 70-44, kids are human, man, they get a little bit, not playing with that same passion. So Miller will go to the line here as far goes to the bench with his fourth foul. They won 25 games in a row at home, the eighth best uh, home winning streak the UD Arena down there at Dayton. Miller, a freshman from Arlington, Virginia. Here's a little tidbit for you. Only six teams can claim that they've won five NCAA games in the last two years. Pretty good company. His brother, Sean Miller, UConn, Kentucky, Michigan State, and Wisconsin. Not too shabby. And they're proud of this one. Dayton and Duke are the only two schools that have a perfect graduation success rate. I know Archie's very proud of that. Archie down his fifth year at the helm at Dayton. He's had better days than this one. Tapped away from Austin, gets it back. Shot clock down to nine. Pollard reached in and slapped it away. Hey, knowing Archie, I can guarantee you he can't wait to get back in the gym, look at the video, get back in the gym, and go over all the little things that he thinks they have to improve on. Well, he's a good team. They're better than this. He brought back four starters from an NCAA tournament team. That and two games in the tournament. Shot clock down to two. On the drive, Sumner. No one picked it up. Sucked in by Reynolds. Tell you this, there's Reynolds up on the glass. We haven't seen him a lot of minutes here because he got in foul trouble. Yeah, I think the one thing we're getting out of this, you're right, Dave, they're a good basketball team. But I think the one thing that I've seen in being here for three days is this Xavier team is way better than what we thought. Way better. I mean, this is a legit, I think, top 15 team. Sumner with the miss, but a little Reynolds rack. He gets up there in that iron, and he knows exactly what to do with it. Smith to shoot on the other end. That game in Cincinnati is going to really be a test for Nick Cronin and his kids, too. And he's got an outstanding team this year. Got a lot of balance. Mike DeCourse, who I have great respect for, and talked him a little bit about them in a game when we did a game earlier this year, Michigan State in Kansas, and he said, yes, yeah, Cincinnati's got some Good defensive play, good balance, and Nick Roman's back healthy. That's the one's very positive. Indeed, very happy to hear that <laughs> after he had to step aside. Under nine minutes to go here at the Advocare Invitational, the championship game, which was really built up, highly anticipated, if both of these schools were going to get into it because it's such a great rivalry. Foul go the other way as Pollard tried to get free. Nice little trap right there. Good trap. They're going to get Sumner for that person. So he will step aside. Say so Cook and Scoochie Smith really have been very key players for them. And they have not been able to play at the level they normally play. And well, that foul will go against Dayton as Makura hit the deck. And that's going to be foul number four on Pollard. See, I think the danger zone right here. When you're down like they are, and then now to start to go to full court pressure, try to pressure this club, I think it's going to be very, very tough. Well, there's the contact. Didn't seem like a whole lot of it. Now, Xavier passes the ball so well. They spread the court well. They get good spacing. Very difficult to trap and double them up. They'll get layups. London, the freshman. Nice dish. Makura finishes. There's the layup. There's the layup. They've done it all night, All night. They go all afternoon. Layup after layup. Great execution. There's the 1-3-1 one, one zone. They make you put a little lob over the top. It allows the zone to move. 8-13 to go. And another whistle. And we have heard a lot of tweets here this afternoon by the officiating crew calling it very tight. Yeah, a lot of tweets. I'm going to do a lot of tweeting after the game. A lot of tweets on, in the car in the back. I'm going to send a tweet, tweet, tweet. How many followers do you have, by the way? Not enough. How many more? So 750,000, is that what I heard? Yeah, a little about that. But come on now, follow me at Dickie V. Come on, people, follow me. We have a lot of fun. Miller buries the first one. And John Crosby, another freshman coming on for Dayton. Might as well get some kids in there, get some little PT, playing time, experience. I think Miller's going to be a very good player for them. I really do. He's got a nice stroke. He's out of one of the top prep leagues in America, the Washington Catholic Athletic Conference. Led them to a state title. 
Davis out high now for the Musketeers. Very good shooting team. They led the Big East in fielding in the field goal percentage last year. So excellent on the free throw line. He led the Big East, Davis, in shooting free throws. And stolen away. Davis comes away with it. Up ahead, Crosby trying to finish. Oh, he, roll got in. he got the little roll. 74 to 52. Full court pressure. Gonna rotate. Run and jump a little bit. McKinney London shoveling off for O'Mara. Two more. Layup City. Layup City. Trying to pressure. Go to double it up. It is Layup City. Now, this has been a dominating effort since the tip, really, at 4.30 today. And stolen away by London. I think London's going to be special, really. I love his versatility, the size. You can't teach that size. Chris Mack able to play 11 guys consistently. He had 11 score in the first half against Southern Cal. He did. Very deep team. Deep and talented. Davis. Shot the three, nobody rotated back. And Davis That's, leaks out to the lay-in. That's one of the first mistakes they made all day. He shot the three, Davis, and nobody helped him out and rotated back. Williams a oh, hook wow. shot, and he'll knock it down. Sirius Williams, the freshman. And a timeout, Xavier. Just back to remind him, hey, guys, I know we're in great shape up 20, but let's not finish playing poor basketball. Let's play and execute and be efficient. Six and a half to go, a 20-point lead for the Musketeers. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by AdvoCare. We build champions. Disney Field Hockey Showcase is the premier event for one of the nation's fastest growing sports. And at ESPN Y World of Sports Complex, female athletes can contend for college scholarships on the national stage. Don't miss out. To find out how your team can compete here, visit DisneyFieldHockey.com. Good crowds here. The attendance for the tournament, it's a record 24,842. Tell you one thing in the house tonight. Hey, really, Alberto Beef Jerky Dickie V Sound Alike Contest winner, Ryan Bodings in the house. I went to lunch with him. Hey, there he is, Ryan, right here. He's very wave, Ryan. There he is, sitting next to Angela Hirsch. There's Ryan's family, his dad, his brother, Luke Wilson. They're all from Des Moines, Iowa. All excited about Iowa State basketball, and I don't blame them. So the Dickie V sound alike yeah. contest. And did you get a chance to hear the winner? Oh, yeah. Is he good? He's better than me. <laughs> <laughs> 6.35 to go here. And Xavier to inbound. And they have led throughout since the opening tip. There's that <coughs> full court pressure. <coughs> Clear it out. Going to now rotate over and try to double up. The biggest lead was 29 points for Xavier today. See, I think you lose a little of that edge. I really do. On the other end, you got a team playing desperate. They're being embarrassed, humiliated. So things are going to start to swing a little bit. Foul on Williams, incidentally, and that'll be his third. This has been all Xavier, all Xavier. A-plus in every area, even a little slippage right now. Still give an A-plus. So looking forward to a more competitive game tonight. Providence and Michigan State. And a couple of All-American candidates off target there by Blewett. And a Hall of Fame coach, too. A guy I know is going to be the Hall of Fame. Thomas. On the drive, walk. Crosby, man, to reach in and a foul instead. He walked. Foul came later. In this game, the foul is always going to come. The way this one has been played, and it's been called very, very tight. And as you've said a couple of times today and, and a couple of other games this weekend, it's going to be painful at the beginning of the season, and I think this one qualifies as a very painful one. Absolutely. It's even more painful for a Dayton Flyer fan yeah. and a Dayton Flyer coach and a Dayton Flyer um, player. You got that right. O'Mara back to the bench. He gave him a nice lift in this one, especially on the glass. Yep. Crosby to shoot. You saw a big smile on the face of Bill Murray sitting here with a Ghostbusters time. A little groundhog, a little St. Vincent, a little stripes. <laughs> His son and the coaching staff, Luke, with 
Chris Mack. And Luke was at Rhode Island for a couple of years before joining the staff of Chris Mack. Very bright future. On the drive. Oh, a tough angle as Sumner hit the deck. He's in some pain. No foul on that play, but he will get the basket and also a very sore hip. He has 14 points. He's played really well. Started out the game exceptionally well. Set the tone for Xavier. Made a strong drive along that baseline and hit the deck. He's out of a tremendous high school program. Detroit Country Day. There's a candidate for Michigan's Gatorade Player of the Year. He's up on his feet. Scored over a thousand points. Won a state championship. Same high school produced Shane Battier. Produced Chris Weber. Boy, they think he's going to be a very creative scorer. And here's a little glimpse. Well, you look at their perimeter players. When you look at his ability, in fact, they're in the ability of people like Davis and Blewett and the whole bit. They, they got versatility. On the bench. And after taking that hit, Crosby thought about the three. He'll drive it mid-range. Rebounded away by far. Is at a big game? He has seven rebounds off the bench. I tell you, if you look at his rebound totals and the minutes played, they are really unreal. Because remember this, he shares the post inside with Reynolds. Davis getting around Crosby into the lane. Boy, he's strong. Hey, Dave, how many layups have we seen today? I mean, it's been layup after layup. And you don't usually see that against a team like Dayton, coached by Archie Miller. They usually give help, they play defense, they communicate. Turnover City. Well, a ton of those, too. It's just been an ugly game in many respects for Dayton to turn it over 21 times. And you're right, it's been a layup drill for the men in black. Here's Makura beyond the three-point line. Blew it, bouncing for Reynolds. For Reynolds again. Can't play Reynolds and Ford together. That's a tough combination. Hook won't drop, but he was fouled. What's with the black uniforms, though? What's the black? That's in the school colors. <laughs> Not that I remember. He'll be at the line here, and Makira coming out. Getting a really nice hand. We're heading over toward his bench. See if he remains in the contest. Reynolds to the strike with 4.38 to go. And McCurry is going to hang in there. I really love this kid. I love his upside. I love his ability. He's just really a talented player. I don't prove a little bit on the free throw line, but block shots, score around on the interior. Very athletic. Can be explosive. A long, long wingspan. Can't 80 wait. to 57. Can't wait to join you Wednesday night at the Cameron Indoor Stadium. Yes. Duke in Indiana. Indiana needs a big, big win. Coming off two losses out there. Now we with the high expectations on that Indiana team. They got to find a way to regroup. And none better if you get a big win over Duke. That'll wake people up. Pollard denied. Both Reynolds and Farr went for the basketball. And it'll go on Farr. That's number five on him. And you know, he wanted to play 52 minutes in this tournament, and he had 23 rebounds there. I'm telling you, we chart his rebound totals per minute play. They're off the charts. Huge hand. Got a great hand. Great hand. Ben standing up cheering for him. He's hard, physical, tough, tenacious. Bill Murray likes it. Come on, Bill. Smile. You got to like it, Big Bill. <laughs> no one gonna save your hat. Pollard at the line. Maybe the Bills blue and white instead of black uniforms. That's to be cool. That's to be cool. You know what I mean? I was looking for a reason. Now you gave me one. I guess that's cool, it. Cool, man. You gotta let the young recruits dig that. They dig that. Maybe something more to it than that. And coaches, coaches want to do what the kids want. It's all about recruiting. You don't become a genius by just X and O. You become a genius by getting players. Father, the 6'6 junior from Chicago. He was named the most improved player in the A-10 last year. Now, Flyers are going to have better days and nights than this, but it's been all Xavier here this afternoon and into the evening at the Advocare Championship. He's done what I've seen here. 
being here this weekend, this Xavier team to me could be as good as the team they've had, and they've had some quality teams. And they, they very well may be another foul on the baseline, a top 10 team, and you know a really good team when you see them. And they don't have a lot of weaknesses. They have size, they get point guard play. Foul here on McElvain, so he has fouled out. And even when they get a guy in foul trouble like a star like Reynolds, they go to the bench for a guy like Four who comes in and rebound. So you're right, Dave. They don't really have a lot of what you call negative areas. They have not to me. They really are a positive basketball team. That's a potential breakout stars. Reynolds might be one of them, the junior from Detroit, the preseason Big East first team pick. Tell you one thing, if I was still coaching University of Detroit, he's not wearing that uniform right there. I can guarantee you, they're not coming into that city. We sent a message loud and clear to Dayton. When I got that job, we said, they're coming in, getting those guys like they did in the past. Reynolds really one of the top dunkers. And out he comes to a huge hand. Yes, sir. They all love to play with each other, too. Chris Max done a great job. Look at the camaraderie, the hugs. And winning will do a lot of that, too. Winning has a way of bringing that chemistry together. Final four minutes of the Advocate Invitational Championship. Lead has been as high as 29 points for the Musketeers. Early firing that one out of play. And the turnover. May have been tipped there. We'll see what they come back with. And we have a timeout and the Advocare Invitational. They can shine that up right now for Xavier. They are just about four minutes away. Well, the Advocare Invitational coming down a home stretch here, 83-57. And Xavier has had a tremendous run here. Now, next year, here's a look at the tournament field. What do wow. you think? Florida got hanging. Well, look at that field. Iowa State, Miami, small, Stanford. And could it be out? Could be like a mom in at Indiana State. Always has quality plays. A good one. I hope we're back here. Hope we're back here. Now, the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference is the host, so they always have one team in the field. Well, the Gators are going to draw a big crowd. You know that. Sure. Mike White's going to do a solid job with the Gators, too. Tougher place to guard Billy Donovan. But he is a guy that the players are going to respect and really like. Whirly's jumper. And tipped and controlled by Xavier. A lot of one and done efforts by the Flyers here. They have never led in this game. Oh, come on. Come on. Abel outside the three. Here's Davis. It's a strong game here, strong floor game. Blewett can't control that one. It's out of play, so they throw it away. That's their 12th turnover. This is the one we're looking forward to, you and I, Dick. But first, it'll be Louisville and Michigan State on Wednesday, the Big Ten ACC Challenge. And then you and I will be at Cameron Indoor for Indiana Duke. Absolutely. You know, Rick Pitino and his club really doing well. If they want to get into the top 25 very easily, just go out and beat Michigan State. I mean, that'll get some recognition. It's that easy. No, it's not that easy. <laughs> <laughs> just beat Michigan State. Uh, just beat Michigan State. 83-57. You'll see a great player to keep racing Allen, getting better and better. And a little learning situation after the Kentucky game. Coach K put him on the bench a little. We came back and got 62 points. Yeah. Against VCU and Georgetown. We were there in the garden. Against a good Georgetown team, too. And that's, that's a team that, you know, if you're looking the other way, you're not paying attention to the Hoyas, they're going to be really good by the yeah. end of the year. They're a talented basketball team. And they've lost some tough, tough games early. O'Mara to the line. And he'll be shooting two here. Six ten sophomore. Did a nice job. Came off the bench. Positive. Three new substitutions into the ballgame now for Dayton. Williams coming back along with Davis and Crosby. And McCurry getting a real nice hand from the Xavier Faithful. Boy, they really came from Ohio to fill up seats in this tournament. They're gonna have a lot to cheer about this year, buddy. A lot to cheer about down in Xavier. There's that one three one zone again. Making it difficult for them to reverse the basketball. Nice give and a block by O'Mara. 
You're right. He's the unsung hero in this game, and Abel connects on the other end. See his quickness right to the goal. They got a number of guys that have that driving ability, like Abel, who's from Louisville, played in Indiana. Well, this ties the highest lead of the day, biggest lead for Xavier. Crosby into that lane, back out for Davis. Rebound tip controlled by Miller. And Davis had to scoot across that midcourt line. Almost got caught for a bad court violation. Worley. Rebound comes right to Miles Davis, who's the most vocal leader for the Musketeers. He also has six rebounds. That's a guard at 6 2. And a timeout. Xavier takes one right here, 86 to 57. We look ahead for this Musketeer team as they churn toward a victory and a championship here at Lake Buena Vista, Florida. And Chris Max got to be delighted the way his team played in their most important game so far. Well, they really got all the parts, man. They can make shots. They got the great follow through. They can defend. They get in the post. They post up really well. What can they do? They really do a great job. Like my post in the middle. Right, I love your post right in the middle. Yeah. So again, I always have to go home and explain to my wife why, why I'm so bruised and beaten working as a broadcaster. That's the Italian that made me like to so, hit, touch. Working with Dickie B for two hours. Shot clock down to six. And a foul underneath with a minute 38 to play. Come on, guys. Eat the whistle a little bit right now. Get this thing going. Get it over with. Come on. Miller with his fifth. So he fouls out. I tell you, I'm really glad I got a chance to see Xavier because they really have impressed me. Just like I was impressed with Michigan State against Kansas. I mean, certain teams, you know they're going to be good, but then you see them live and you get a better idea. Because this is not Cupcake City when Chris Max teams beat. That's not Cupcake City, Dave. That's a legit basketball team, experienced team, a team that knows how to win. But they won two NCAA tournament games last year, and they brought four starters back from that team. And... Xavier just ran rush shot over them today. And they really did. They'll be a lot better when Pierre comes back from the suspension. Because he's a very gifted player. Xavier with eight players who have at least eight points. And that makes a team very tough to scout, doesn't it? They got six guys that average nine or better. You're right, Dave. Very difficult to prepare for them because they got so many people that can hurt you. You can't just cut off one guy and say, well, we're going to stop them. Austin on the drive. He'll settle for the pull-up jumper. But they love the rebound. It's contagious with that. The guards rebound. The Sumners, the Bluets. Kaiser Gates, he is held up and fouled. I've seen a lot of those fouls before the shot is ever taken today. A ton of those. Edmund Sumner, our player of the game, brought to you by Advocare. 14 points, three rebounds, three assists. I mean, nothing that jumps off the page statistically but that's Xavier that's who they are exactly great balance nine, nine in the last ten years the NCAA tournament only missed in 2013 teams on the glass Austin Jr. out now with a minute six to go what if they're heading right back to Cincinnati or do they go to enjoy Disney World tonight now the kids were able to spend a few hours with their families in the parks yesterday. Yesterday was a day off in the tournament. And I think Xavier rested well of 90 to 57. Is Coming up one, next is, is the great cup, Dick. One, one, three, one. Oh, you had a great cup. Well, you can't wait for that. You watch it every year. Davis is bodied up and fouled. My buddy John Sanders loves the great cup. He does, doesn't he? Oh, he does. He came out. 54 seconds to go. And Daryl Davis will be at the line to shoot for the Flyers. Look at the jubilation. Look at the jubilation. Nothing like winning to put those smiles on. Hugs, squeezes, big men on campus. And there's a look of kids that just so disappointed. I thought this was going to be one real tough battle right to the end. Well, at this point in the season, there's no doubt who the better basketball team is. But check back in a few months. Maybe this will tighten up if they ever have the opportunity to meet again. It's the first time in three years they get a chance yeah. to play each other. Should play on an annual basis. The rivalry should definitely happen. I was telling to the Xavier AD today, talking it all. My feeling about it, I think those rivalries are such a great plus for college basketball. 
Scooped up by Williams. Last seconds here, 27 seconds to go. And Xavier with an incredibly impressive performance to win the Advocare Invitational Championship against an arch rival. And again, they played 161 times as the tip is good. Well, I voted an AP poll, and I'm going to tell you right now, they're going to go a lot higher in my eyes than they were. That's for sure. A great performance by Xavier. The Musketeers, absolutely super scintillating, sensational today. And they leave it with the Advocare trophy. They are the champs. We are the champions. They win it by 29. 90 to 61, the final impressive. Xavier wins the 2015 Advocare Invitational. For my partner, the Hall of Famer, Dick Vitale, I'm Dave O'Brien. Thanks for being with us. The Grey Cup is coming up next as we say goodnight from E.